Welcome to the Daily DLP. Today I'm going to discuss the Brad Holmes press conference. You remember that? It happened all that long time ago? Well, for various reasons, I didn't get to talk about it until now. So that's what I'm doing today. Let's get it on. So... Brad Holmes met with the media to put a cap on the 2023 season. The Lions, you may recall, won two playoff games and and then came up just short in the NFC Championship game. It was the best result for a Lions team in the Super Bowl era, with the previous high mark having been 1991, which was also a 12-win season with a championship game loss, but only a single playoff win, and honestly, in that championship game, as someone who watched it, I can assure you that they may as well not have even shown up. That was not a real game. And Brad Holmes wanted people to recognize that. So he said something to the effect that he thinks the organization has learned a little, or has earned, sorry, a little bit of slack in regards to having every little decision they make, maybe not being nitpicked quite so much. Because everyone has hated their drafts so far, as far as, you know, the zeitgeist media pundits. They've hated their off-seasons as a whole. But here the Lions were, playing games in January when all but three other teams had been said packing. So when the ESPN bobbleheads who may or may not have watched more than five or six Lions games during the three year span that Brad Holmes has been in charge, start spouting off this off season about how the Lions don't know what they're doing and they will spout off about that. Maybe take a pause. Maybe check the receipts. Maybe examine the source. Because when PFF tells you that the Lions didn't draft properly, and they will, it's not because they have some anti-Lions bias. It's because the mindset of PFF's draft theory was set in a time when they were right, when teams did overvalue the wrong positions, and they valued the right positions often for the wrong reasons and made bad drafting decisions based on those faulty reasons. Like, Offensive linemen who ran 40s that were very good used to get drafted really high for some reason. And like every once in a while, they still do. But I think everyone's kind of come around on the idea that that number is the least important matter. Like it's, it's the number that matters least at the combine. We're not seeing four running backs go in the first round anymore. Like last year was insane because there were two prospects worthy of a first round draft pick a running back first round prospect is very rare they don't come along very often and it is a very risky move but when it pays off it works out quite nicely like and i'm not slagging pff i mean i subscribe to pff i don't think anyone who talks about football and doesn't have access to their data in some form can honestly say that they really have a clue what they're talking about. It is a, it is a, it is a data set and it is a very good data set at telling you what it tells you. Like there's a bunch of companies out there offering data and anyone who claims to be a free thinking person with a valid opinion should be taking in as much data as they can and have time to actually look through. Like I joke about the spreadsheet mafia all the time, But I do read their stuff and I do listen to what they have to say, because while I may disagree with their conclusions or their interpretations at times, it's just information. And you should be able to take in information without adopting it as your personal ethos. Like when someone tells you they don't like the Lions draft, you should be able to ask whether you think they have more credibility than John Dorsey, than Ray Agnew, than Lance Newmark then Mike Disner, then Don Corzine, then Brian Hudspeth, then Mike Martin, then Rob Lohman, then Joe Keller, then Kerry Conklin, then Dave Uris, sorry if I messed that one up, then Eloy Ledsma, again, apologies, 
then Jordan Martin, then Mark Olson, then Patrick Malarkey, then Scott Sika, then Steve Neal, then Ademi Smith, then Dakota Duncan, then Justin Licker, then Michael Pelfrey, then Austin White, then Blake Ask, then Joe Harvey, then Brianna Howard. And if you automatically think the answer on that last one is probably, please stop watching this video immediately, unsubscribe on all platforms, and go cry about what a jerk I am on Reddit. Then Levi Wilson. Then K.O. Briganti. Apologies again if I get your name wrong, sir. Then Paul Barterstock. Then Toby Junker. But the point is, does the person speaking have more credibility than the combined efforts of all of those people who go into everything that the Lions do in the offseason? And the answer is no, they don't. That was Brad Holmes's point. And that does not mean that the Lions are never going to make a bad decision or be wrong about something. We can already point at a few head-scratching personnel choices over the Brad Holmes tenure. Like, in hindsight, we can do that. But in the moment, re-signing Romeo Okwaro was a no-brainer. Hasn't worked out. An Achilles injury made that one three years on just not look like a great move. The same can kind of be said for Charles Harris. Like, when that signing was done... It's coming off a really good season. You got to do that. Uh, how about the Levi owns a Rike draft pick? The receivers they signed in 2021, Denzel Mims in 2023. Like when they've missed, it's largely been injury related. Not always, mind you. Like Brett Perryman's son just can't play wide receiver at an NFL starter level. But when you sign a cheap free agent nobody wants, you get that a lot more often than you get Khalif Raymond and Josh Reynolds, who were both brought in in that same scenario where frankly, nobody else really wanted them. But when they give Jared Goff a massive contract and they will, because he has earned it. And if you disagree with that point, you're just telling me that you made a judgment sometime two to four years ago and that there is no evidence in this world that will ever change your mind. Like Brad Holmes message was not to the media that they suck at their jobs. And if that was your takeaway from the press conference, like that all sports media are liars and they don't know what they're talking about. That was the wrong takeaway because while media folks may not know more about the off season than the combined efforts of the entire Detroit lions personnel department. And if I missed anyone, um, I apologize. It's because I don't understand your job description from the title you have on the lions website. <laughs> Please hit us up. We'd love to have you come on with Chris and Jeff and explain what you do. That'd be great. Uh, I'm not going to apologize for like, for example, not leaning the senior director of people's precise day-to-day -day duties. If they're somehow scouting related with all due respect to Amy Lemon. Anyway, while an individual media person cannot be trusted to know more about the draft free agents and the realities facing the Detroit lions football team, they know more than you do. Many of them know more than I do. And I have people commenting all the time that I'm helping them understand this game and how it works better. Uh, Brad Holmes' point wasn't that the people reporting on the sport are morons who don't know what they're talking about. His point was that we've reached a point with this organization where if Sam Monson of PFF tells you that the Lions don't know what they're doing, Sam Monson is probably wrong. If I tell you the Lions don't know what they're doing, I'm almost definitely wrong. And if your reaction to the press conference was to head to Twitter and harass beat writers and make fun of them for posting their stories showing that your harassment of them was invalid and you were wrong, you're a child. You're a petulant child lashing out because mommy and daddy didn't love you enough. And they will never say something like that to you because they're all professionals. I am so far from being a professional. <laughs> I will happily say things like that to you. Thank you for watching. But if you are that person, please don't support us on Patreon because I don't want to talk to you in the Slack chat that you can access for only $5 a month and neither does anyone else who's in there. Please don't watch us on YouTube rather than listening to the podcast because the money generated by a view is infinitely higher than that from a listen to help us kind of keep all this stuff going. Uh, like if you're that person, 
but you insist on supporting the show in some way, please do it in audio form only because that generates basically zero money to keep the lights on and I don't want to owe you anything. Please don't use the affiliate links below or on the site or linked in the Spotify show notes. And for the love of God, don't follow me on Twitter at Mr. Tweetson. Like people keep doing that despite my best efforts to convince them that they shouldn't. I don't even link the show's episodes on my Twitter feed, guys. Like, if you want that, just follow Chris. Like, I'll talk about games as they're happening every once in a while and stuff like that. But, like, I'm a, I'm a pretty terrible Twitter follow, to be blunt. And, like, unlike me, Chris doesn't block everyone who seems like they might not be a super fun hang. That's my threshold. <laughs> anyway, see you tomorrow, if you insist on coming back. Have a great day.